Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. I'm Jamie Allison, and this is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different niches, people doing really cool things in their space. We talk to athletes, we've talked to CEOs, we've talked to scientists, so people from a whole bunch of different areas, and uh, they all bring actionable things that you can relay into your own lives. And I know we have a guest today that we're going to be able to do that with just before we jump into this really cool interview. Um, a couple of quick things, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, um, if you are looking for a publication that um, covers health, fitness, nutrition, all of those different things, check out Impact Magazine. Um, you can do that either through their Instagram or you can go to www impactmagazine.ca and, and check them out. They've got lots of cool things to see there. Um, the other one is that we have um, a relationship with the Full Focus Planner. If you know Michael Hyatt, you know that he's done tons of work to get that prepared. And uh, that's something that, uh, that we have a relationship with because so many of our guests talk about personal goals and goal setting and, uh, and being able to write those goals down are, are a big, huge part of uh, being able to accomplish things. So uh, take a look at it. Uh, you can go to Instagram and just go into our bio and you'll see a link through there and it's the full focus planner. So today, really uh, excited to uh, speak to somebody that uh, I've hoped to, uh, to talk to for a long time. Um, Hunter McIntyre is one of the most decorated multi-sport athletes going. Um, he's on, uh, on top of, he has been a mainstay in the sport of OCR, which uh, I think a lot of people will know him from. He's got six world titles to his name. Uh, he's a CrossFit Games competitor, has the Murph world record, has uh, the High Rocks world record. Um, he was featured on the 2020 Spartan games and if you haven't seen that uh, check that out um, and he uh, is also undefeated on the popular tv show steve austin's uh, broken skull challenge he was named one of the top 50 uh, fittest athletes by sports illustrated and he's been featured in magazines like men's health and men's journal and and uh, you've seen him all over the place so so thanks for taking the time hunter i know you're a busy guy you're all over the place so thanks for taking the time with us i'm glad to share it dude uh you know interestingly enough i always like to open up a big chunk of my week to be able to connect with other people because it's basically what got me where I am today. So um, thank you for having me on and I'm glad we got to talk. Yeah, well, very cool. Thanks for that. And, um, you know, I mean, we talk through all the things you do. You're a, you are a true multi-sport athlete. You do everything. Um, did it, was it always that way with you? Like, did you grow up playing a whole bunch of different sports or, um, you know, where does that come from? Mm. Truth be told, no one in our household really cared very much about sports um uh the only person in my life who really wanted me to do sports was my grandfather and he lived in rhode island as i was growing up in connecticut yeah so i would get to see him every couple months and he'd just stop and he'd be like you know you're so talented like you really have something and you know everybody's parents say that to him <laughs> like you could do whatever you want you could be a you could be an astronaut or you could be a doctor and in reality like i think that's just like a little pep talk but for some reason, he drove it home with me. He never let me quit. Yeah. And I didn't give it enough focus when I was younger. We were just climbing trees, skateboarding, smoking pot, throwing rocks and ponds, you know, stuff like guys do. Yeah. And then one day it just hit where I was like, you know what? I'm going all in. And we, we, I went after everything. I never went after one thing. I went after everything. So I think yeah. that's where I ended up having the, the widespread success that I have today. And your grandfather was um, athletic himself, was he not? Truly, truly athletic. Um, he actually probably could have been a very talented athlete on the world uh, level at a younger age like myself, but he, yeah. he went and funded himself going to medical school and funded a whole family while going through school. And yeah. then he went to athletics later on in life and became a master's Olympian, bronze medalist, and he uh, was a world champion at the master's level. So he was very talented. Um, wow. And he took the same kind of work ethic and direction and put it into me. So I'm lucky that I had him. Very cool. And is there, um, I mean, you've done tons of sports. Is there a sport that you haven't tried that you really want to try at some point? <laughs> I mean, there's always a lot of sports that I'd like to try, but I realize that the higher, higher you climb up the ladder, the harder it is to go back down and then to get up to something else. Yeah. It's just like, um, cause you just, it, you have to regress through these kind of skills and intentions that you put into one thing so that you can focus on other things. So I've done everything I've really wanted to do. I'm disappointed that no one in my family put me into like major league sports, just because I look at people like I've met the Tim Tebow's and the Grant yeah. and like these athletes that 
I see them and I'm like, if you just put me in a pair of shoulder pads, like I could, <laughs> I could stand with them and I could play the game. Yeah. So I did wish that I did something like that, but it, you know, should have, would have, could have, what are you going to do? Well, and, and now, I mean, you've, you've parlayed what you do into being able to do it for a living. I mean, you've, you know, you're a professional and you get it through a lot of sponsorships and things like that. How much of that um, for you, because you're, you're in these sports that maybe aren't the same as say an NFL sport or something like that, but a lot of what you get is um, some of it is your athletics and some of it is your personality and what you've been able to do. How much of, how much of those two things factor into you being able to, to do it for a living? I mean, it's a really big factor. Um, You know, I, gave a chunk of honesty to on my Instagram earlier this year, where I told everybody uh, the reality of what it looks like to really be an athlete these days after what happened with COVID. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll give you guys full honesty. I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year through winning races and doing event, um, doing like sponsorship deals, whether it be sure. a watch company, shoe company, um, training companies, all this kind of stuff. And like this, I lost everything overnight. I went from making, you know, a tremendous amount of money down to making 10% of that. And uh, it's the kind of thing where it's not like I have a contract where as long as I put my pads on, I get a a paycheck. Um, I have to win. Like I won this weekend and I won $10,000, like $10,000. Yeah. Most people are like, whoa, $10,000. Well, in reality, if you think about it, I spent $3,000 a month just on food. Yeah, And then I have to pay to get to the races. Then I have to pay to get the shoes because I don't have any sponsors right now. Um, yeah. I spent $350 on, on race shoes to get ready for a marathon just recently. So yeah. uh, I don't want to play this game of smoke and mirrors to be a very, very high level athlete. It is tremendously expensive and takes a lot of time development, building a coaching team, building a team of gear, travel, logistics, all this kind of stuff. So um, interestingly enough, like almost every dollar that I make right now comes out of my own business, which is a training company called house hunters Academy yeah. of strength. So, uh, I'm just letting anybody know right now, you can be a very high level athlete and have a very successful career, but you have to be a very smart entrepreneur as well, unless you were blessed with the opportunity to be in a major league sport. Yeah. And, and now is your, um, your Academy is that, has that been driven out like did you put much into that before kind of COVID or is that something that you really kind of went full force into because of COVID I've actually started training businesses multiple times Um, you know I would personal train people I started personal training people back in 2010 in New York City and then I would send online programming to them not even knowing that that was a term at the time I was just like hey listen if you just send me $50 a month I'll just send you the workouts to do yeah. And I, I would do things like that all along. And then I would give my resources to other companies. Like, you know, I worked for Beachbody. I worked for another company called Leaderboard. I worked for another company. Um, it's slipping my mind, but I just keep on working for these companies. Yeah. And then I started Hunter's Academy of Strength back in 2018. And it was extremely overwhelming for me because I was doing one-on-one um, coaching. Like, let's say you contact me and you said, Hunter, I want to get ready for a high rocks. And I'm yeah. sending you it. I had 40, 50 clients and I was answering personally doing day. it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that was a tremendous uh, success. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I was giving them my best efforts because yeah. I was still training four hours a day, eating, napping, doing other efforts. And so I, I dissolved the business. But now with the way that companies are structured where you can just have an app go on your phone, yeah. I upload a PDF and then all of a sudden... You, if you go to my website, you have four programs that are going to show up every single day if you're a member, and you can pick the workout that you want. Yeah. It's very easy for me logistically to develop, and it's very easy for you to you know, basically just buy and, buy and use. And if very you want cool. to, cancel it at a whim. It's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I mean, a lot of people have found that's been an opportunity in the last little while is that people are also very open to doing that because they're home too. They're not necessarily going to gyms the same way as they were before oh. and stuff too. So that's cool. Um, so one of the things that when you look at OCR, because you've been so successful in that, but um, I would say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that um, you're not the prototypical kind of body type in some of those things. I mean, you're a bigger guy, you're, you're bulkier than a lot of the other OCR athletes. And, um, oh you know, how does, how does that play into like, uh, how, how have you been able to overcome that, I guess, in, in your success in OCR? I never really had to overcome anything, to be honest. It, yeah. it, so I was a tremendously successful runner in high school, not with much effort. And yeah. um, not to say that I'm being braggadocious, like blah, it was just, more, I didn't yeah. care at the time. As I said earlier, we were doing other things. 
And then I had to go to rehab because I'd gotten trouble when I was younger. And I became a logger in Montana and I went from 150 pounds to 215 pounds like that. Yeah. And the job of being a logger isn't just a fat guy who walks around and picks up logs. Like I was running up and down mountainsides for eight hours a day. So it was almost like endurance training with muscular stamina and like, you know, muscular strength. So uh, as soon as I got out, I went into modeling and stuff, but I kind of kept the strength and the stamina from the logging and the running. And by the time I showed up my first race, I, I, it, it just seemed like the whole battlefield was designed just for me to win it. Yeah. And I always have to train. Like I'm, I'm, I'm always adjusting and tweaking and I've, I've done sure. everything. I've gone vegan. I've eaten only steak. I've power lifted. I've done no lifting. I've, I've adapted my body as many ways as possible to win whatever effort that I wanted to. Yeah. So even right now I'm having to do it daily. So it's uh it's interesting concoction, but I tend to do what's necessary to make the wins. Now we had, uh, we had Ryan Atkins on a little while ago and at Spartan games, I mean, he edged you out just barely, I think in, in yeah. that. And uh, if people have seen it, if you haven't seen it, you should, it's, it's a pretty entertaining show. Um, but um, when he did that, it, you know, you, I know kind of went into it really wanting to, I mean, knowing he is, is a top athlete, you wanted to beat him. Did that really, did it sting not beating him in that? And, uh, or, or is it just kind of more, you know, that's, that, that was your goal because you knew that, you know, you guys, you two were going to be the heavy competition at that. I mean, listen, I, I think losing to Ryan is not anything to be ashamed <laughs> yeah. of. And also in the fashion that I lost was nothing to be ashamed of. It just logistically, I screwed some things up and, it was just skewed more towards endurance. Like if you had just changed one or two events, it would be totally yeah. different. I'm not saying he didn't deserve the win. I'm just saying that, you know, Spartan games 2.0 could be totally different and we're going to have to wait to see, yeah. but yeah. I had to adjust a lot of my training knowing that it may be exactly the way it was last time. And I'll have to beat him based on my training, not on the day. I'm just going to have to train for the day, not uh, expect the day to lean towards me. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that that's sport these days. Like, Fortunately, something like high rocks is always the same. Yeah. Um, but also I was kind of born into the sport of it always being anonymous, what you're going to have to compete in. So you have to prepare for the unknown also. Yeah. 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 Well, and uh, you know, one of the things that you have, whether it's in high rocks or CrossFit or any of those things you go through um, uh, people hit that wall at some point, whether it's mentally or physically, and you have this real ability to to cut through that what do you you know for people who maybe aren't that high level athlete but still have those things where they the mind is telling them you know okay i can't do this anymore what do you do to get past that because you must hit that even though you know you're that high level athlete do you do you have something you you do yourself mentally or is it just come innate for you i mean typically it's it's just it's just levels of distraction um you know i i think if you burn your hand on a hot surface and then you put it under water, it's not like you didn't, your hand's not still burning. You're just distracting it with this cool sensation yeah. of cold water. Um, I think that's the most basic for way for me to explain it. Uh, you know, if I, if something else hurts, like if I'm so, like, you remember back in the day when you had to saw somebody's arm off, <laughs> you'd have to bite on a stick. It's the same exact thing. So we're always trying to find things to distract us from what our body's trying to tell us is the problem. Yeah. And I've just become very in tune with that. Uh, you know, if, if it's sleep deprivation, I hold my breath or I'll bite something or I'll, I'll sing a song. Singing songs has like been something that's always been super simple for me while I'm, um, uh, while I'm like, I'll make chants when I'm competing and even counting every single yeah. time I'm carrying a sandbag. I just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You do that for five to 10 minutes. Now the sandbag carry is done. And I know that sounds like silly, but in reality, I think way too many people, like most of my, my competitors that are one tier below me, try to make things very complicated when in reality, it's very simple. Yeah. It's either hard work and hard determination or not such hard work and not so much determination. And typically the, the first one's the one that's going to win out. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of getting yourself out of your own head. I think that. That's the other piece of that, right? Uh, you're a you're a really competitive guy, I think. You know, I would assume, and and it comes across, I think. Um, 
from a competitive standpoint, it's funny. Another person we talked to not too long ago was Tia Toomey. And um, I asked her about, you know, okay, well, people, people have this idea of who you are sometimes when you're in competition. And, you know, is that, is that fair that you're quiet and things like she said, no, I'm not, I'm not quiet at all, except that you should never meet somebody for the first time when you're getting ready for a competition or in competition mode, because somebody can be very different because they're so focused. When, when people like, if you're in that mode, like, do you are you different like is it a different hunter when you're right before a race or is it are you pretty much the same person all the time I'm pretty much the same person all the time i think the most interesting thing is people get really i tend to have uh i don't believe this but i tend to have a lot of negative connotation involved with me competing people think that i'm too tough uh, people think that i'm an asshole people think that blah 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 and i say you know, I want to remind you that this is what we do for a living. And anybody who's doing less than first place is not doing that great of a job, I believe. Yeah. So I can, I come to compete and there's, you know, only a few things that I can put on the table. It's my physical body and my mental body. And the fact that you're upset by the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing a little bit more mental intensity than you are already goes shows that you don't care as much as I do. And two, that you're allowing your feelings to get in the way of what's most important, which is winning. Yeah. Well, uh, you even put in, I think it's on your Instagram profile where you say, I think training is for fun. Competition is for winning. And is, does that, is that kind of your, how you look at it? Like, is, is that the difference? Yeah. I, I ride bikes with my friends. I lift weights with my friends. I don't race with my friends. (laughs) Um, you know what I mean? Yep. And people take offense to that. And it's just like, Hey guys, you, you got to get used to it. Um, I treat this like war. I have tactics. I have strategy. I have mental warfare. I have physical warfare. I'll use guerrilla tactics. I'll use, uh, you know, basically like straightforward tactics. I'll use whatever. Yeah. I know what every single person I compete against, what their weakness is. I competed a guy, against a guy this weekend. You know, we don't have any problems. We've raced against each other for years, but I decided not to say anything until it was the perfect point when we were racing. And, you know, I set a record while doing the farmer's carry in high rocks and he had to put it down four times. And I just ran past him and I said, you know, and I'll say it more politely on this one. I said, I went unbroken and I didn't have to say anything else besides that. Yeah. And it crushed him. After that point, you saw his, his lead diminish more and more and my lead grew his, you know, his pace diminished more and more and more. And you know what? That's just like going up to a giant and cutting his Achilles tendon. Rather than focusing on the whole thing, just go for that one little spot. And well, and every sport has that. Sometimes it's just not as, you know, people don't necessarily know what's happening in the same way too, right? Like if you've got yep. a team sport, it's happening all the time. So it is interesting that, you know, you, you get a lot of focus on that. But, um, but again, you know, you hear that when you talk to football players, you talk to hockey players, things like that, it, you know, that stuff's happening all, all the time through the game. So um, uh, one thing you do talk about, um, I think sometimes is um, overtraining and how, how, you know, whether some sports do that a little more or whether um, that can be a problem for some athletes. Like, do you find, um, and I'm sure it's very different for somebody like you who, you know, trains a lot all the time, but maybe that person who isn't at the same level, do you think that's an issue sometimes with people is, is how much they train or maybe not enough recovery? I wouldn't say overtraining is very much an issue for anybody. I would say under eating, under hydrating is probably the biggest issues I witness. Yeah. You know, I spend so much time with people and I watch them and they're training so hard and then they have like a smoothie afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> I, I had a, I had a 1200 calorie smoothie and then I had a hamburger afterwards. That's, that's 2000 calories plus yeah. after just working out and you won't even eat that in a day. You know how hard it would be for you to overtrain yourself. I think you can have overuse injuries. Like yep. you could be, you could get plantar fasciitis if you run too much, or you could, you could strain your pec if you're benching every single day, or you could pull your back a little bit or have tightness in your hips if you squat every single day. But if you're smart, let's say you decide to even go running for two hours today. That's a lot of running. You could go running two hours today. Tomorrow, you could just go into the gym and bench press for two hours straight. You could go the next day, go take a spin class, two spin classes the next day. As long as you're not just like beating up one thing, Same like if thing. I was... I know sometimes I'll meet up with my friends and I haven't played video games in like years or months or whatever. And we play video games for a couple hours, just catching up. And I look at my thumbs and there's calluses on them. 
And I'm like, and I'm starting to get like a little bit of a blister. I'm like, holy crap, that's from playing video games. If I did it the next day, my thumb would bleed. Um, my point is though, is you got to go on to the next thing. I don't think for the most part, I think that word overtraining is this thing that's kind of used as a buzzword yep. in the marketing industry. So that yeah. things like whoop can sell and all these other uh, recovery products, like don't overtrain, like think smart, train harder, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, eat more, drink more, and then train as much as you want. Yeah. And, and be variable about it. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, are you the kind of guy that writes things like when you're, uh, when you're setting goals, cause I'm sure you have, you know, goals of what you're going to do this year or whatever it is. Are you one of those guys that writes everything down and kind of has a specific goal thing, or do you just kind of do what, do what comes? No, I mean, this morning, first thing I did when I woke up is I sat down and I wrote down all the splits that my competitors ran while writing again. I, I beat them all <laughs> by five minutes but I still went in and I wrote down the splits of what every single one of my competitors did and compared it to my times. Yeah. And I, I want to be first in everything, not just a few things. So do you watch what all of the, uh, all of your competitors in, in the different sports are doing? Like, would you look at what um, you look at an event that you're, you have coming up or that you just did, but do you know, like, let's say you've got a, if you were going to do a high rocks event would, and you know, who's going to be there, do you spend time kind of trying to see what, what they're at and make sure that you can kind of beat those before you get there? Yeah, I'll do my research. You know, as soon as I was done with the Spartan games, you know what I did is I went and I looked at, I realized I, I wasn't cardiovascularly in that good of shape. I had yeah. spent like all of COVID drinking beer, doing bench press and doing deadlifts, yeah. which was valuable because I won the events that were, were yeah, you know, the deck of stuff there. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So but then I went and I looked at Atkins. I said, Atkins won every endurance event. I'm going to write down, oh, I'm going to look at his last year of training and I'm going to get the exact average of how many hours a week he was training. And then I wrote it down and I said, all right, Hunter, if you want to beat him, you have to do that many hours. And since then I've done that many hours every single week of cardio. <laughs> That's <And> interesting. <laughs> so, you know, I don't want you to think that I'm a creep staying up in the middle no. of the night, but I am a creep staying up in the yeah. middle of the night. <laughs> And I'm thinking about it. Well, and and that's uh, and I'm sure they're doing the same thing. So, uh, so I would I would assume. I know Ryan is uh, is He's is just as him. just as much doing the same kind of stuff. I'm sure. Um, right. So, you know, one of the things that um, that we always look at for any guests that we have is is trying to see, you know, are there a couple of things that um, they might be able to, you know, a, a lot of the people that listen here aren't obviously going to be at the level that you're at in some of these events, but they might be thinking, like, especially High Rocks and Spartan and some of those things, now that things are starting to open up, they want to get themselves into, you know, a, a, into that type of a competition. Are there a couple of things that you think they should start to do if they want to move forward? Maybe they're active, but how do they train for something like that that's maybe a little more introductory? Well, first of all, I'll say you're always a novice until you're not. It's like, you know, I was amateur until I was pro. And then I was a pro until I was a champion. And then I was a, cha a champion until I was a world champion. So it's like, you're always one, one notch away from being the best in some regard. And, you know, you got to take that into perspective. Obviously you can't be a world champion in everything, yeah. but uh, I would say like, have that mindset like go in with a positive scale, not a negative scale. And then I would say it's like best to read as much as you can on what past champions have done. Like my books, my, my phone is full of audio books, regular books. Yeah. My YouTube channel is, is constantly just researching people. Like you need to research. I get so many people I talk to and I find out they're like, yeah, I'm like really into this. I'm like, what do you do? They're like, well, I have no idea. Like I kind of like one day I'll go out and I'll do this. And the other day I'll go do this. And I'm like, okay, uh, that's not going to work. So you got to go learn strategy. You got to learn from people who've strategized better and smarter than you before. So that's really important. And then, you know, take some time and develop like your own version of what your real goals are. Like I, I sat down with some people this weekend, like my girlfriend, to be honest, didn't do tremendously well in the race. And, you know, I'm really happy. I thought she was going to absolutely dominate it. And I think sometimes like when I was talking to her afterwards, I said, you know, you have to do this. Like you have to like put something on the wall and you have to aim at that thing every single day and look at it rather than just running. It'd be like running in the dark. Like you want to have a path, an exact path. You know, I don't want any vagueness at all. If you want to be 
get where your goals are. Even if it's just to show up at the start line, don't be vague about it. Be exact. Yeah. And then whatever your next goal is, same exact thing. So I think those are my only, uh, my, my best answers. There's no trick rocket science to it all. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. And, and uh, it, it, uh, things coming up for you in the next little while, do you, um, do you have a bunch of stuff planned or, I mean, I know it's a, a little bit difficult still, but um, you know, how, how is this year looking for you so far? If I can be totally honest, it's still such a crapshoot. It's, yeah. it's very hard to tell you the exact thing. And I'm trying to ignore that, but yeah. My goal this year, ultimate goal this year is to go return and take the world championship at High Rocks. Um, yeah. If Spartan Games does happen again, I'd like to win. Um, set the world record for the 200-pound marathon. I think those are all coexist with each other. Yeah. Um, and then if I'm healthy and happy and whole, I'm going to go straight to Abu Dhabi and go and go win the world title for High Rocks. Like, wow. I'm not High Rocks, I mean Spartan Race. Yeah, yeah. I think those four things fit into the next eight months quite well if it's eight months are we on the fifth month yet no yeah yeah, well, yeah, yeah yeah okay so basically that's it and i know that sounds like enormous but if yeah. i do everything <laughs> just well it, yeah. it's just it's it's just like stacking little bricks every single day until i have that path that i told you so yeah. I'm doing very um micro movements rather than big movements micro movements but uh, they're pretty lofty goals so that's uh, that's pretty awesome anyway um so if if people are looking kind of, kind of to follow you but also find out i mean you've got a, a great training program they might want to take a look at all those things what are the yeah. best ways to do that Hunter? uh you can find hunter mcintyre on any any form of social media um our training business is house h-a-o-s training at gmail if you want to contact me or if you want to go, that's also on social media. And, you know, I try, as I said, just like with you, um, I really was able to increase myself in my living, in my lifestyle by reaching out to people that inspired me and I could learn from. So I always try to respond to people, even if it's just like a one word answer, I give you as much as I can in that moment. Yeah, no, that's, and, and you know, I, again, we appreciate you taking the time because I know it's, uh, I know it's busy to do that, but um, the stuff you've, you've given today has been fantastic. And I know people can take a lot away from it. And if you haven't checked out uh, Hunter's stuff, we'll also put in the show notes, uh, his Instagram and, you know, his website and all that fun stuff too. And uh, if you haven't hit subscribe for the podcast, do that now um, because uh, we have great people every week, just like Hunter. But uh, again, thanks for time, taking the time, Hunter. We really appreciate it. It was an absolute pleasure working with you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And we will talk again on Big Idea, Big Moves.